Joining us now to talk more about his research is Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb. Professor Loeb, it's always good to see you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Professor, um, first I want to ask you about the discovery your team made uh, of what you believe are fragments of the first ever meteor found that came from outside of our solar system. What makes you think that this material is not from our solar system? It has composition of elements with much higher concentration uh, than we find the, on Earth, the Moon, Mars, or any other object in the solar system. These elements are, for example, beryllium, lanthanum, uranium, uh, at concentrations that are hundreds of times higher than the typical solar system materials. And uh, that implies that it came from a completely different environment. And already, you know, a, a decade ago, this uh, meteor was discovered with a very high speed that implies that it's not bound by gravity to the sun. And now we have the composition as another signature of that. Uh, and the question is, where did it come from? And Obviously, one can think of natural origins, for example, uh, magma ocean and molten rock planet, where you might get those elements uh, separated from other elements. But um, it could also be technological in origin, uh, if another civilization realized that using those elements is useful for some particular purpose. Any reason that you would think it's technological in origin? I mean, explain to me, what is the leap then that this has anything to do with aliens or UAPs? Well, the object was moving faster than 95% of all stars in the vicinity of the sun, uh, relative to the so-called local standard of rest of the Milky Way galaxy. And moreover, it uh, was able to maintain its integrity uh, to very high stress uh, as a result of its friction on air. So um, it, it was actually tougher in terms of material strength uh, than all space rocks previously identified by NASA over the past decade. And so um, it's tougher than even iron meteorites. And the question is why? And one possibility is a Voyager-like meteor. Just imagine our spacecraft Voyager leaving the solar system and colliding with a planet far away. It would appear as a meteor of uh, unusual strength because it's made of stainless steel and unusual speed because it benefited from propulsion. So that led us to go to the Pacific Ocean and search for those tiny droplets that melted off the surface of the object. We found them, and now we analyze their composition. And indeed, it looks quite unusual, never seen before. It, what is the likelihood in your mind that it is technological in origin? Well, we want to find out based on evidence. Uh, so we are planning the next expedition to go out and look for bigger pieces of the object because it's easy to tell the difference between a piece of a rock and a piece of a technological gadget. So uh, we are hoping that this would resolve the, the, the question. And at the same time, one can try and work out uh, what kind of scenarios could lead to such a composition that is quite unusual. Uh, and we are just at the beginning of a very interesting story here. You know, uh, Professor, I've had the pleasure of speaking with you several times before, and I do want to ask you a delicate question, if you can bear with me, um, because may none of us ever read the meanest things written about us on the Internet. But can I ask you, I mean, how do you respond to some other scientists who've been quoted in press this week who basically say Professor Loeb is out there doing things that reflect poorly on the rest of the scientific community? He's out there saying all of this stuff. Um, how would you respond to that? Well, I'm following the scientific method. The, you know, we went to the Pacific Ocean to collect the, the materials from this meteor, uh, and then we came back and analyzed them and wrote a scientific paper about it. This is exactly how science is done. Those who have strong opinions without seeking evidence are not scientists. They are just opinion uh, advocates. Uh, so they have an opinion, they have a prejudice, we are just looking at the clues and reporting them in a scientific paper. And of course, you have to consider all possibilities until the evidence is conclusive. So there is not, no harm done in considering possibilities. I don't know why those people are, are offended by considering possibilities. I mean, let me give you an example. We don't know what most of the matter in the universe is. We call it dark matter. And I've been working for several decades. You know, I, I wrote uh, more than a thousand scientific papers, many of them on the nature of dark matter, which we don't know. And so people propose possibilities and then experimentalists go out and search which of them might be ruled out or maybe correct. 
Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.